All right, let me talk you guys through what we did today in class. So it was week eight and we were introducing lesson 11 personal pronouns. We actually, here are my no here's my board notes. There's a picture of my actual board, I'll post that. So we actually started right here. I probably will do this every week where we'll review the um, basic form for each of the conjugations. So we'll just repeat this over and over again. Lado, ladari, ladawi, lada, tus, and maybe throw in some other first conjugation verb and repeat the same endings. We'll review what those endings are, the fact that we found our stem right here uh, for the, all of the verb tenses that we know so far. We'll come off of the second principle part. Anyway, so we did that with the first conjugation. I think maybe we might have done it with porto, porto, portari, portavi, portatus. We did it with Moneo. We just repeated those several times. I want to get the flow, the rhythm of that pattern down. So then if you come over here to the book over here, this is where they review concepts. This is not new. We need to understand the uh, first, second, and third person singular and plural. And this is just an overview of that. So we read that out in class. We talked about it. We remembered the OST, OST, most is unt, endings for our verbs. And then we just went ahead and dived right into our new vocabulary. So here it is right here. And then we also had it on the board. So we talked through each of these uh, pronouns because they replace nouns. Their form here is going to look a little bit like a noun. You're going to see your nominative singular and your genitive singular of each version. So looking at both of these, because they're totally brand new to us, we did go ahead and pull out our grammar book and look at rule 123 where these are mentioned. And I, I did go ahead and have these posted up on, the, I had them on the board and I had them turn to the pages, the page in their book where they could look at it in their grammar book. Anyway, so we just kind of read them out loud a number of times. Ego, me, he, me, he, me, me, me. We did that over and over and over again. We did it over here in the plural. Uh, we looked for where the similarities were in the vocab. We have ego, mei. Sure enough, there's our nominative and our genitive right here in the first person. So these are our first person singular, and these are our first person plural. So with that in mind, and I think I wrote it on the board, but I don't have it on this piece of paper. If this would be I, because that would be singular, this would be we, the plural. But both of these are first person, first person singular, first person plural. So we took some time just kind of looking at them and we looked for things that looked familiar to us. Uh, for example, somebody mentioned that the nominative and the accusative are the same here. And I believe we have found that in a number of our declensions that the nominative and accusative many times will match up. Um, over here they don't, but at least in the plural they do. We also noticed the idea of this is os is, which is a familiar pattern. I believe it happens in the second declension where we have the is os is in our ending. We noticed that the may may repeats itself. Let's see, I don't remember what else we looked at. Somebody asked the question, why are there two of these? And I actually, this is what it looks like in the grammar book. Somebody said, why is there a space here? That's because the nostrum and the nostri go together with the genitive plural. So I was like, well, that's a good question. So we have these little footnotes here. And so I had them come down to this right here. And we read those, which didn't really make a lot of sense to us because it says one of them is the objective genitive and the other one is the partitive genitive. Of course, none of us know what that really means. So we looked at the rules. I was like, well, let's go see what it means. I don't know if we really, really need this information at this point, but we will go check it out. So if you come back here to, what did it say? Rule 684. Um, let's find it. 684. And I had already highlighted it in my book because I knew that somebody was going to ask this question. And so we read it. It still didn't make a lot of sense to us or to the, to the students. So I said, well, let's look at those English sentences. We have fear of God. We have the slaughter of the chiefs. It's like, well, okay, objective, genitive. All right. Sometimes when you don't fully understand something, it's okay to keep just keep going. And it might be something that it comes to you 
later. So if you come down here and look at these, it says these express the whole, or part of the whole. So if you take a look, we have a large part of the troops, first of all the soldiers. Now all of a sudden things are becoming a little more clear. Over here we're talking about when the, the genitive is talking about part of something. In other words, we have the entire army or all of the troops together, but this is a separate smaller portion of that. It's a fraction of it, part of the troops. Over here, we could have the entire group of soldiers, the army, but I'm sorry, but we're talking about the first ones, which again is only a fraction of the entire group. So my understanding at this point would be that, well, these partitive genitive are going to have something to do when you're talking about a fraction, a part of a whole, and the others we're going to come up here with the genitive. So at this stage in the game, and from what I know, we don't really use the partitive genitive at this point. So I told them, don't worry too much about it. We will at this point just be dealing with that first one. Okay, so nos nostri, nobis nos nobis. But we should still learn this for when the day comes when we need to use, be able to use the difference between them. So if you come over here, so we went through all of those. Now, at that point, we get to, in the textbook, we, we did read all of this. We get to exercise 144. Now, exercise 144, I typed this up. I made myself a little piece of notebook paper because I wanted to print this and give it to everybody. And here we have all of the words from exercise 144 here. So we took a minute, we looked at them. What do you see? They're like, oh, I see now. Uh, I see pronouns, I see verbs. And so sure enough, the blue ones are the verbs, the red ones are the pronouns. It's like, let's read the directions. The directions say, tell what form these are and then translate. So I wanted them to have a good understanding of what um, the first part of those instructions say, tell what form these are. And so what we did was I told them, first and foremost, what I want you to do is I want you to look at each of these words and I want you to decide <coughs> you know, person, like first person singular, second person plural, I want you to decide that information. And so we did that, and actually, we did it in a column like this. So everybody had their own paper. If they had a question, they were able to ask their, their neighbor, but we went through all of these and we identified um, person and number. So that was easy enough. And then I said, well, let's go ahead and let's just look at the verbs. Now, in the answer key, when the answer key gives you the tense, it frequently was some, something like present indicative active or future indicative active or something like that. And I was like, you guys need to know what that means because when you're over here in your verbs, these are all the indicative actives, what we're learning so far. It says it right here, indicative mood, active voice. So if you're looking at a verb in this section right here, it's going to be in the present indicative active. If you're looking at a verb in this form, you've got the imperfect indicative active and so on, future indicative active. So I wanted them to practice that. I told them they could abbreviate it. They were going to do it in a second column right here. Now, I did have them just do the verbs first, and then we went through and we checked ourselves. Present indicative active, future indicative active, imperfect indicative active, and so on. So we worked our way down the list of verbs and made sure everybody understood what they were doing. Every now and then somebody would get one wrong and I just went literally in a circle around the room and had them give me the answers. Then we decided the case of the pronoun. So we had genitive, singular, nominative singular, dative singular. Uh, some of these had the opportunity to be two things. It might be dative plural or ablative plural. So once we had all of those, we checked our work. Uh, this actually went really, really fast. Then we translated. Again, if you know your present indicative active, then it would be he sees. If it's future, then you're gonna see the we will. Uh, imperfect, you are gonna see the past helping verb with the ing verb here. So anyway, that's what that page looks like. This actually went faster than you would uh, believe. 
And then exercise 145 is this nice, big, long letter. It goes from here to here. And I thought it would be good for them to practice translating an entire piece of text like that, which is not something we normally do in Challenge A. Um, usually, I know for me as a mom anyway, I might have them do a paragraph or the first three or four sentences before we move on to the next thing. But because this is a letter, a Roman uh, writing a letter to his mother, I thought it'd be fun to just do the whole thing. And so I actually typed it up. And so I've got it here with line numbers. And what we did, you'll have to ignore my markings right now because I gave each, each person a copy of this and we read it out loud um, in Latin. And so let them practice the pronunciation. Each student did a different line. So they just would go from line one to line two, line three, and so on. And each student would read a different one. And I told them I wanted them to practice reading it out loud in Latin, even though they may or may not understand what it means. Once we had it translated, maybe they could read it again and see if they could remember what it meant. And the more they can connect looking directly at the Latin and, and thinking of it in the English. And there's this whole section at the beginning of the Henley book that talks about doing that. And so I wanted to practice it here. Anyway, so I copied this first part on the whiteboard. You'll see it in my... Um, in the picture of my whiteboard and we just went sentence by sentence and we simply labeled it. Now they, they essentially translated it out loud. We didn't write it down anywhere. All we did was get our labels down. My focus was on finding the subject and the verb first and recognizing um, if they agree with each other. So if this guy is singular, this guy has to be singular as well. This is one of our new words and it means I. So here we have I am. All right, even though, even though, yes, this word alone can say I am, uh, we are actually going to start using the, the pronouns now too. So there you have it. And then we just labeled all of this other stuff. We know we have prepositions. Prepositions give us prepositional phrases, which we always mark with parentheses. We worked our way through the sentence. And they're pretty good at, at figuring out what this means, even though that wasn't my focus at this point. So again... We found our subject, we found our verb, uh, we had both singular, so we underlined once for singular and then twice for plural. Somebody noticed that there were actually two verbs, because that's usually my first question, where's the verb, where's the verb? So we find the verb, and then somebody else is like, well, there's another verb, it's over here, it's pugnant, and I'm like, oh. So do we have one subject with two verbs, or do we have two subjects and two verbs, meaning two different clauses? And lo and behold, sure enough, here's a conjunction, and conjunctions will join clauses. So this is where we're getting a little bit of that English grammar in here, and you want to take the opportunity to grab that whenever you can. Anyway, if you do have a subject that has two verbs, for example, if I said that Bob ran and swam, if he's doing two verbs, I'm going to use one of those fanboys conjunctions, the, the and, to join my two verbs together. Um, so it depends on that conjunction. That conjunction is important to help you understand what kind of clauses you're joining together. Anyway, so we have that there, although I don't think I circled it on the whiteboard. I think I forgot to do that. Anyway, and then we just move sentence, sentence to sentence, find the subject, find the verb. Um, if we have an adjective, I had them draw an arrow to the adjective right here, fortis, um, modifies homo. This whole thing is set apart in the commas. It's the a positive right here. And so we reviewed our foundation's memory work of what is in a positive and how it renames or explains. It's a noun that follows another noun that renames and explains it. So there you go. There you have it. You have Caesar, a brave man. And then over here, we also have another one that's sort of renaming. All right. But in this case, we have our linking verb. So we have our subject, linking verb, predicate nominative uh, pattern going on. So there's lots of review work taking us back to our essentials here. Uh, we have another adjective. It's modifying this word here. You can take a look at how the endings will be the same case and number. So those guys have to agree when your adjective is modifying a noun. We found again that we have yet another subject and a verb joined to another subject and verb. So we have that conjunction again joining two clauses. This right here is important to point out. Sometimes just because the first noun, um, the first word is noun, does not always make it the subject. So a lot of kids want to call this the subject just because it looks like 
we're so used to our subject being first in the sentence. But anyway, sure enough, we have our accusative ending there, so that must be the do. Down here, things get a little strange. We have our dash, which sets off something new. Um, we have omnia videt, omnia parat. So we saw this little mark here, so I was like, let's look that up. And when you look, I'm not going to go there with the phone, but when you look at this footnote underneath the exercise, it says that adjectives are sometimes used as nouns. Omnia is so used here, it means all things or everything. So this is actually acting as a noun. Okay, it's the direct object. Your subject is, we, we're back to having our little subject hiding in our verb here. This says, he sees, he sees what? He sees all things. There's our D-O. And if you take a look at that ending right there, sure enough, that's your accusative ending. All things, it's your accusative plural. And it happens again here. Now it's like, well, wait a minute. We have two clause joined together. Over here, when we had two clause joined together, we had a conjunction. So here's an opportunity to learn a punctuation rule. All right, when we join two clauses together with no conjunction, if they are a complete clause, a complete thought, subject and a verb, subject and a verb, we can do that with a semicolon. So anyway, it was this a great little grammar lesson right here. So that was a lot of fun. They did really great. And I told them I wanted them to do that through the rest of the page. This is the entire letter and it's exercise 145. It was, it's just really great. So I told them they don't have a lot of exercises this week. So if they do a paragraph a day or something like that, that would be really great for them. Anyway, so I think we did end up going over in time, um, but not too bad. Let's see, what do we do next? At this point, I believe we turn the page and that's where we get our new vocabulary. See it there? So we walked through our new vocabulary. I forgot to mention earlier, anytime we see the verb with the four principal parts, we're gonna compare it to the form up here and figure out why is it different. So here we have the AO. Sure enough, there's the AO. Here we have ERI. ERI, so far everything's the same. Here we have an UI, but down here, we don't. We just have the E on the end. So that's where things are different. We don't have an UI. And over here, we don't have the ITUS. We just have the US. And the stem changes a little bit. Um, so anyway, so these four principal parts, I'm like, anytime you're working with your flashcards, I want y'all to just be re repeating wideo, wideri, wide, wisus, wisus. So repeat those so that you can hear them in your head, all four together. And down here, basically the same thing. We went through each of these and we recognize how it is different from the standard, which I'm gonna just keep these on the board all the time. We have two new vocabulary words there. These two pronouns introduce second person. So we have our second person singular and our second person plural, and you'll see them over here. Again, we repeated, we chanted them, tu, tui, tibi, te, te, tu, tui, tibi, te, te, over and over again. And we looked at the comparison of how it's not unlike the first person. So anyway, the pattern, the rhythm, some of the endings are the same, and then same thing here. Nos, nostri, nobis, nos, nobis, vos, westri, Wobus, wobus, wobus. So there's a lot of similarities here. So they just need to be copying these. And if you'll look in their grammar, I mean, in their workbooks, I believe it's page 131, 130 and 131, you'll see this chart here and you can use this. You can either copy it or you can put a sheet over it and they can just copy, 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 copy. So anyway, and last but not least, we are going to do this exercise as a class right here. This is um, basically a conversation between a group of people. So it's, it's kind of long. It goes, let me get this out of the way. It goes over here all the way to here. So I divided this up the night before. I have 11 kids in my class. And so I divided this up and we drew popsicle sticks and assigned each kid a section. And I had them line these pages in their books so they would knew what they were responsible for. And I um, wrote in my posty note over here which number belonged to which kid. So next week they're gonna come back having translated their small portion and we're going to, I don't wanna say act it out, but we will 
say it in English and see what's going on in this little story. So that should be fun. Anyway, that's pretty much what we did today. So I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope the kids who missed my class today, I hope this video is helpful for you. And uh, we'll see everybody next week.